Hey guys, welcome back to another Circuit Basics tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you the TDA 2003 bridged amplifier I built. First I'll show you the circuit schematic, and I'll explain what the important components do. Then I'll show you the PCB I designed, and talk about some of the design principles I used to lay it out. You might be wondering what a bridged amplifier is, so I'll tell you. In a bridged amp, two amplifier chips power a single speaker. One chip drives the positive speaker wire, and the other chip drives the negative speaker wire. The output of the two amp chips are opposite, so when the output of one chip is positive, the output of the other chip is negative. This essentially doubles the output power into the speaker compared to using a single amp chip. For example, my stereo TDA2003 outputs about 7 watts, but with this amp I'll be getting about 14 watts. That's a fairly simple description, and it's actually a little more complicated than that. But to keep this video at a reasonable length, I've intentionally left out some details. There's a full tutorial for this project on the Circuit Basics blog. It explains the amplifier circuit and PCB layout in a lot more detail. I also put links to the schematic and PCB project files in it, so you can edit the layout or change component footprints if you want. I'll put a link to that in the description, so be sure to check it out after the video. I used Easy EDA to draw the schematic and PCB layout. So let me just bring up Easy EDA. And log in. Okay, I can get to my projects from up here. This is a list of all my projects. I've made tutorials on all these different amps, so check those out on the blog or on our YouTube channel if you're interested. Now we just want to look at the TDA2003 bridge amp though, so I'll open this up. Here's a preview of the schematic. And here's the PCB. We want to open this in the editor. So I'll click on Open in Editor. This schematic is based off the schematic in the contact data sheet, but there are a few modifications I added to improve the sound. I'll explain in a minute, but basically I added a radio interference filter on the input and added more power supply decoupling capacitors to the chip's power pins. Here's one of the TDA2003s, and here's the other one. You can see how the speaker is connected with one wire leading to the output of each amp chip. All right, let's get a closer look at this and I'll talk some more about the components and what they do. I'm just gonna export the schematic as a PDF file. Okay, let's go over the inputs and outputs. This is the positive audio input. This is a mono amp, so there's only one input signal. You can make a stereo amp by just duplicating everything here for the other channel. This is one of the positive voltage inputs. Here's the other positive voltage input. And there are multiple ground points around the circuit. In the PCB, these will all connect to a ground plane on the bottom layer. Next are the power supply decoupling capacitors. These filter noise from the power supply and act as a source of reserve current for the amp when the power supply can't supply current fast enough. The values aren't super critical here. You just want a small one around 100 nanofarads to one microfarad and a larger one in the 50 to 1000 microfarad range. Higher values for the larger decoupling capacitor will improve the bass response of the amp, so you may want to go larger there. R2 and R5 set the gain of the amplifier. You can calculate the gain you'll get with particular values of R2 and R5 with this formula. If you want to find the resistance values you need to get a particular gain, you can rearrange the formula to solve for resistance as a function of the gain. Resistor R6 and capacitor C6 form an RC filter at the amplifier's output. This is a low-pass filter, which means that frequencies below its cutoff frequency are allowed to pass onto the speakers, while frequencies above its cutoff frequency are muted. The cutoff frequency can be found with this equation. Resistance is in ohms, and capacitance is in farads. There's another filter here at the input formed by this 47 nanofarad capacitor, C5. The purpose of this filter is to remove any radio frequency interference that may get picked up by the audio input cable. Okay, that pretty much covers all the important components, so let's check out the PCB layout. I'm just going to find the PCB file for this project. This is a list of all my project files. This is the schematic file, and here's the PCB file. I'll open this up. So this is the PCB editor. It's great for building the PCB and routing traces, but it's not the best for just viewing the PCB and reviewing the layout. There's a better way to view the PCB. 
EasyEDA has a Gerber file viewer, which will let you look at the PCB files without making any changes to the file. To get to the Gerber viewer, click up here on the Fabrication Output button, and you'll be taken to the order page. If you want to etch the PCB yourself, you can download the Gerber files here too. Here's where you can access the Gerber viewer. Alright, so this is a view of the PCB's top layer. You can also get a view of the bottom layer. Let's start by looking at the top layer. This PCB is just for one channel, so if you're building a stereo amp, you'll need to build two of these. These are the footprints for the two TDA 2003 chips. Both chips will need to be attached to a heatsink, so I put the chips right on the edge of the PCB to keep the board out of the way of the heatsink. This is the footprint for the positive voltage terminal. I'm using quarter inch spade terminals for all the connections to the PCB, but if you want to use another type, it's easy to change the footprints in the PCB editor. As I mentioned before, the full tutorial has links to the EasyEDA project files so you can edit the PCB. Here's the terminal for the power supply ground. This will connect to the negative wire of your power supply. This is the terminal for the audio input ground. This is the terminal for the positive audio input signal. Since the PCB is just for one channel, this will connect to either the left or the right channel audio input. Up here are the audio output terminals. These will connect to the speaker. I didn't label them left or right because it actually doesn't matter which speaker wire you connect them to. C3 and C7 are the power supply decoupling capacitors for the left chip. I place them as close as possible to the chip's power pins to minimize resistance and inductance. That will allow current to flow much better and improve their ability to supply reserve current to the chip. These are the power supply decoupling capacitors for the other chip. They're also placed up close to the chip's power pin. Okay, now let's look at the bottom of the PCB. Here are the two TDA2003 footprints. I used a ground plane modified to incorporate a star ground. I guess you could call this a star ground plane. The ground plane keeps the loop area of the circuit small so the traces aren't susceptible to transmitting or receiving magnetic interference. The star ground layout prevents the high current power and output grounds flowing through the low current input circuitry, which can create noise in the output. In this design, all the ground connections are kept separate until they meet at the ground terminal. The ground terminal connects to the ground plane right here. This is where the audio input ground terminal connects to the ground plane. These are the ground pins of the two TDA2003s. These are the negative terminals of the power supply decoupling capacitors for the right side TDA2003. And these are the negative terminals of the left chip's decoupling capacitors. This is where capacitor C8 connects to the ground plane. This is resistor R5 of the gain setting resistors. Here's capacitor C6 of the output low pass filter. And here's capacitor C5 of the input radio interference filter. Okay, that about covers most of the important components, so now I'll wire up the amp and play some music for you guys. If you want to order this PCB, you can fill out your order details on this page, and then click Save to Cart. I ordered five of these boards, and the cost came to about $22 US, including shipping. They took around 10 days to get here, and they came out really nice. I couldn't find any mistakes in the traces, the printing is really clear, and the surface finish is nice and shiny. I'm pretty impressed with the quality. Now this PCB is actually a little different from the one I just showed you. After I got this PCB, I decided to make some improvements to the design. I separated more of the ground connections leading to the negative voltage terminal. But the one I just showed you is the most current version. It's the one you'll see if you follow the links in the full tutorial. So this is the assembled amplifier. It's attached to a heatsink. I've used insulating pads and thermal paste between the chips and the heatsink. The thermal paste will help transfer heat and keep the chips cooler. The insulating pads electrically isolate the two chips from one another. Since the metal tabs are connected to the ground pin, you can get a ground loop that could cause hum if they aren't isolated. Back here are the two audio output terminals. Here's the negative voltage terminal, labeled GND for ground. And here's the positive voltage terminal, labeled PWR for power. Here's the terminal for the positive audio input wire. And there's the terminal for the audio input ground wire. Here's my 3.5 millimeter audio input socket. The black wire is the ground, and the yellow and green wires are the positive audio signal wires. Here's my power supply. 
It's a wall plug I scrapped from an old electric shaver. The output is 12 volts, 400 milliamps DC. Here's my audio input cable. And here are the wires for this 6 ohm bookshelf speaker. I'll start by connecting the audio input. This is just a mono amp, so I'll only be using one of the audio input channels. The ground wire goes to the N- terminal. And the positive audio input wire goes to the N plus terminal. Now I'll connect the speaker. The polarity of the speaker wires doesn't matter. The polarity of the power supply connections do matter though. Since this is DC, you'll need to figure out which wire is positive and which wire is negative. I've already labeled the wires with a plus and minus sign. The negative wire connects to the ground terminal, and the positive wire connects to the power terminal. Now I'll plug in my audio input cable. You can hear some noise coming from the speakers. That's normal when there's no source connected. It'll also make noise if you touch the input plug. Let me plug this end into my audio source. I'm using an iPad and it won't fit on the screen very well, so I just left it out of the shot. Okay, it sounds pretty good. It's noticeably louder than my TDA 2003 stereo amp. It's not audiophile grade sound, but it does sound really good. This would be a good amp for computer speakers or even a car stereo. After the amp's been playing a while, you'll want to check the heatsink to make sure it's not getting too hot. Well, that's about it. Be sure to check out the full tutorial in the Circuit Basics blog before you build this though. There's other things you want to consider that I've left out of this video and the link to that is in the description. Okay, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And if you know anyone else that would benefit from this info, please feel free to share it. Okay, talk to you next time. Bye-bye.